To dry needle the cervical extensors, start by locating the key bony landmarks. Roll off the occiput onto the first spinous process, which will be C2. Also locate the spinous process of C7. Palpate for each spinous process in between. With your fingers, palpate for the transverse processes of the cervical spine. When needling the deep cervical extensors, it is important to stay approximately one finger width lateral to the spinous process to avoid the cervical epidural space. Needling to the cervical extensors should also be performed below the level of C2. This is to avoid the vertebral artery as it is more exposed above the level of C2. There is also no ligamentum flava above the level of C1. Additionally, the C2 cervical nerve exits posteriorly to the C1, C2 articular pillar. There are several different layers of muscle to pass through in the cervical extensors. When needling in between C2 and C7, your needling direction should be aimed towards the articular pillar. Your needling depth and needle size will vary depending on your intent of your targeted muscle. To give you an example of a cross section at the level of C3, the first layer of resistance will be the trapezius muscle, followed by the splenius capitis, then the semispinalis capitis, then the multifidus, which is not shown, before reaching the level of the articular pillar of the third cervical vertebra. At the level of C5, the cross sectional area changes slightly. Once again, the trapezius, the splenius capitis, the semispinalis capitis, and the semispinalis coli, with the multifidus lying deeper, once again not shown. The needle should always be aimed towards the articular pillar to avoid entering the cervical epidural space. The major neurovascular structures, including the vertebral artery and vein, lie anterior to the articular pillar and are protected by the vertebral foramen. The cervical nerve roots exit anterior to the transverse process, so it is important to stay posterior to the transverse process and aim towards the articular pillar. Needling can be performed at various different spinal segments, using the same approach, aiming towards the articular pillar. Approach slowly and ask for feedback. As you pass through each layer of muscular resistance, you should be seeing if that reproduces the patient's familiar symptoms. To demonstrate this on the opposite side, once again locate the spinous process, stay at least one finger width lateral to the spinous process, and direct the needle towards the articular pillar. Progress through each layer of tissue resistance, asking for feedback, looking for the reproduction of the patient's familiar symptoms. Your needling angle may vary slightly depending on the distance from the spinous process. If you are more medial to the spinous process, the needle can be stood more upright, once again aiming towards the articular pillar. If your needling location is more lateral to the spinous process, then your needle should be directed in a slight medial direction, also aiming towards the articular pillar. Here is another example at the level of C5, with the horizontal red line representing the level of the articular pillar, and the vertical red line representing the spinous process. The vertical green line represents the edge of the cervical epidural space. When needling slightly lateral to the vertical green line, the needle can be directed perpendicular to the articular pillar. If your needling location is more lateral, then you can direct the needle in a slight medial direction aiming towards the articular pillar. It is always important to palpate for the key bony landmarks and understand the location of major neurovascular structures, as well as approaching slowly and asking for feedback throughout your needling application.